Welcome back. You're with us on the India Today Mood of the Nation opinion poll. The results of this poll are already buzzing and trending in every state. From Andhra Pradesh to Telangana to Uttar Pradesh, wherever we are going, a, ma a mini tsunami on social media. Lots of posts being viral, exchanged. So that, that's good buzz to have. We now want to come to Rajdeep's home state of Maharashtra. He's already itching, getting out of his chair, all set to get you what should be quite shocking. No matter what you're thinking is happening, I think you'll be shocked by what Rajdeep's about to show you. Rajdeep. We've gone to the north, we've gone to the south. But the best part of the country is when you're a best West case. Indian. Aray, I say. <laughs> so I'm going to go to, the, to as a West Indian, I've got to go to Maharashtra. And who, <laughs> whoever thought Maharashtra would be one of the states which would see so much of chaos and instability in the last five years. We've had three chief ministers and plenty more in that state. What is the mood of the nation showing for Maharashtra, a state that will have both Lok Sabha and later in the year Vidhan Sabha? NDA 40%. NDA 40%. So that's the BJP and the Shiv Sena into bracket Shinde. India 45%, which is 5% higher. 40 plays 45%, others 15. And 45 is NCP, Uddhav Sena, as well as the Congress party. So 5% edge in Maharashtra to the Maharashtra Vikas Agadi. The opposition, the best news coming for the opposition after Kerala and Telangana is here in Maharashtra. This could be another big surprise, therefore. How is it projected into seats? What is... Yashwan Deshmukh C voter poll saying for Maharashtra. 26 out of 48 for the India Alliance. 26 out of 48. A huge jump because the NDA which won 42 out of 48 last time is down to 22. So if there's one state where the NDA is taking a big hit as per this poll compared to 2019, it's Maharashtra. And that perhaps explains all that's been happening in that state. Breakup of the Shiv Sena, breakup of the NCP, because Rahul clearly, here too, the BJP knew this was the one state they were in trouble, which is why they have slightly narrowed the gap, but they're still behind here. Yashwant, are you sure about your numbers for Maharashtra? Because they've taken <laughs> a large part of the NCP, they've taken a large part of the Shiv Sena. If this is where things are at the end, then no matter what happens in this Lok Sabha election in the Assembly, the BJP and what they have is going to face a very tough time. How, why are we ending up with these numbers in your poll? Rahul, out of the 140 crore people in India, is any damn person sure about Maharashtra as on today? I mean, <laughs> let's, be, let's be honest. People are confused, not just because of the previous mandate, the current mandate, people going here, people going there, parties being split, and now the symbols are with the people who do, did not form the party and with some else. So having said that, all It's a maha mess. It's a maha mess. It's not Maharashtra, it's maha mess at this point of time. And let me do a health warning as well on these numbers. Number one, on the voting intent, we have been asking for individual party and leader, Rahul. Which party or leader you are going to vote for? And then we have summed it up like, you know, Uddhav Thakre plus Sharad Pawar, plus Congress, and Shinde, plus Ajit Pawar, plus BJP. But what we do not know here, who is contesting from which seat, and who is going to contest against that person from which seat, which party? What I can see, wherever the BJP tickets would be there, they would be sweeping like anything. Wherever the Ajit Pawar ticket and Shinde Sena ticket would be there, I doubt they will be sweeping in the same way. <clears throat> so the weakest link is on the both sides. On the on the um, uh, this uh, Maharashtra Vikas Agadi side, the weakest link apparently is the uh, Uddhav Thakre Sena, followed by uh, Sharad Pawar and followed by uh, followed by Congress and then the Sharad Pawar. So we don't know out of these three and three which permutation and combination is contesting whom on which seat. Unless we are sure of that, I think. This is more of an no, but I, 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 since this is your home state, right? Yes. Here's the concern that I have, just purely academically, right? Which is that will votes get transferred? In a poll, it's very difficult to capture that. But once you know, okay, it's GVL versus Rashid, mm. then the equations change, exactly right? Exactly the point. Yeah. So right now, you don't know that. You're building this scenario on the basis of what respondents are telling you, but the respondent also doesn't know who's against who. I will mean, two, two, tell you points. two contradictions, Radhi, before you say, I cannot see... 
उद्धव ठाकरे वोटर वोटिंग फॉर अ कांग्रेस और द एनसीपी कैंडिडेट सिमिलरली आई कैन नॉट सी अ बीजेपी कोर वोटर वोटिंग फॉर अजीत पवार कैंडिडेट सो दे आर कंट्रोडिक्शन टू क्विक पॉइंट बिफोर यू कप वन द फैक्ट इज दैट दिस इज an interesting state this year because you've got lok sabha followed by vidhan sabha four months later and speaking to a number of maharashtra politicians they believe the stakes for themselves are much higher in the vidhan sabha so you'll find a number the vidhan sabha is which will be very competitive seat by seat and a lot of what uh, yashwan says will play out there in the lok sabha raul even though the bjp appears prima facie down compared to 2019 I think, and yes, what is right? The BJP will do well in its pockets of influence. They have strong pockets, especially in urban Maharashtra. The problem for the BJP is there is a general sense that you have struck opportunistic alliances and you have broken no. two parties uh, which you were dead against. But GVL, when I was speaking to top BJP leaders, their numbers were 40 plus. They think it's 40 yeah. plus, but a 5 percent lead for the India Alliance after all the torpor you've done. If this is where it is, 22 versus 26. Then it's obviously not the way you are calculating. No, I, I certainly don't see the numbers the way the, the poll is predicted, Ashwin's poll. Uh, primarily because this is an election that Prime Minister Modi is, will be driving. People are voting for PM Modi. They are not voting for individual constituents. This is an election where you will see a massive swing. So anybody voting, uh, but, poll, the poll, anybody but the poll, anybody the premise of the poll, of the, the premise Minister. that gets ref- the premise, which is also the reality of Maharashtra politics, is gets reflected in this poll is th- that BJP at this moment is not a pan Maharashtra party. Modi might be a pan Maharashtra phenomenon. BJP per se is not a pan Maharashtra political no, but party. It's in state. Even in states, Haryana was BJP was Haryana a BJP state until 2014. No, can... Did BJP ever win a couple of seats in Haryana? No. But, but can, once but Modi I... is on the scene, Prime Minister Modi ji, he is one who will drive the entire vote. It's actually, no, but, 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 but give me the popularity ratings because that will give me an indication. Can, can I just yes, explain? If you have those numbers, no. Look, last time the BJP contested 25 seats, the Shiv Sena 23. In the uh, and the BJP and Shiv Sena did extremely well, winning 42. Now what's going to now what's going to gonna happen is the BJP is going to put pressure on both the Shinde Sena and the NCP Ajit Pawar group to contest less, and the BJP will look to contest at least 30 and divide it. Uh, the Ajit Pawar party is happy not to contest Lok Sabha. Their energies are on Vidhan Sabha. Similarly with Shinde Sena, so that might actually mean the BJP could contest uh, more in the, the Lok Sabha. I think the worry is. that there is genuine anger against the way governments have yeah. been broken fallen on all sides towards all politicians so i think you will find vidhan sabha becoming a real battle ground yes. lok sabha yes. the modi factor does play out sharad yes. pawar clearly is weaker in a lok sabha election at the moment he may not even be able to sort of you know campaign as aggressively there as he would in a vidhan sabha but he will hope for some sympathy uddhav thakre is hoping for sympathy which may come in a vidhan sabha may not come in a lok sabha so rahul you could see maharashtra in the space of 5 months having two very different verdicts but you know madhu yaksha gaur this is your good news you know if there is one state where you need to perhaps invest more attention in the next few months is maharashtra and the feeling is typically the congress is not seizing the opportunity you are missing the opportunity to miss an opportunity many of your leaders are leaving joining uh, ajit pawar's faction uh, milind deora left to join uh, shinde sena today baba siddiqui your mla former mla from mumbai has left joined is likely to join ajit pawar so you're not holding on you're the kamzor kadi hopefully your 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 predictions may hold on to the leaders who planning to leave rasdeep but having said that uh, with this is been expecting in maharashtra rasdeep i think uh, various projections and studies we have done and we been very hopeful on maharashtra because of this third pod what raul says it's not helping with the people's mood secondly i give this credit to you know prakash ambedkar also joining inda group can help also the uh, uh, maharashtra vikas agdi to win more seats Uh, Rahul, how do you explain these numbers the fact that things. you've got what seems on paper a strong alliance now with ajit pawar there shinde there the other parties seem weakened but they still have a 5% lead in this poll so with lots of caveats uh, because no one knows what's going to happen in maharashtra but if our thesis uh, is right that people in maharashtra are unhappy with the way parties have broken alliances then the expectation would be that the turnout is going to get depressed which means 
it depends who has the more cadre on the ground. So it, like, so it doesn't matter where Ajit Pawar has gone or uh, uh, Uddhav Thakre has gone. Who has the, like, which of these groups actually got the cadre on the ground? In a depressed uh, turnout scenario, cadres are the, on the ground will make sure that your core <coughs> voters turn out and that group will have advantage. Your sense, Amitabh? See, actually, it's a Khichdi. So, nobody knows which party has the vote. But, Shiv Sena and NCP have the symbol. Symbol plays a very important role in elections. That's number one. As you said, BJP will now bargain for a higher number of seats. So, it will be able to win more and also transfer its votes to the SHS and the NCP candidates. Now, it depends upon how much they have. However, the bad news for the India Alliance is that Congress becomes the number one party of this India bloc because it is the largest party today in the Vidhan Sabha and it will demand for the highest number of seats. And here is where the India bloc does not have a track record of elections because that they have not fought together and the seamless transfer of votes will be between candidates is unlikely to no, happen. But if they had any political smarts, the Congress and the India Alliance Ratchingappa should now be doubling down where they see opportunity. Yeah. Maharashtra, tell, instead of frittering precious ammunition on states which are fallow ground, they should focus on where the land looks politically fertile for them. The problem is that's not how they're thinking. BJP is going state by state, seat by seat, candidate by candidate, plucking, 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 and the Congress is trying to do some kind of an ideological revolution. At least Rahul Gandhi is attempting some kind of an ideological revolution here. But I think the reverse is also true. The way the BJP and uh, Mr. Modi is obviously uh, party to these decisions has been picking up and splitting parties and everything else, and Rajdeep talked about it, doesn't do their image any good. And in Maharashtra... Yeah, but I would their gather, calculation is image doesn't matter when it comes to voting. That's their no, brutal if, calculation. If you are saying I'm taking you to a Vixit Bharat, I have, uh, you know, cut corruption down, I am against dynastic politics, you have to then prove that on the ground. Let GVL respond to that. Yeah. Just, let me just finish the argument. Okay. Yeah, go ahead, go ahead. Because I think it's, 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 a, it's a principal thing that happens. In Maharashtra, I have a, I have a feeling, uh, Rajdeep Kudwaj, and he also expressed it, is I think people, there's a Marathi pride that, which you can define in some ways or the other, right? People must be truly fed up at the way these parties have behaved in the, on that. The way they've split, completely cynical. How do you explain that when you want to take this nation to greatness? And you're Jive, let Jive politics. respond to that. You see, people are very, very... Uh, Practical, let me put it this way. People have great trust in Prime Minister Modi. They know he's the one who will deliver Vixit Bharat. And if he does not have the strength in a particular state to sweep that state, let him, let him galvanize, get that support, because we want him to win. No, no, the sure. people but, but want him I, to but win. Can I ask people you, have I, trust in him. No, so, so, sir, but can I ask you, uh, yeah. today, you're saying people have faith in Modi. Point taken. But... When Mr. Modi says there is a 70,000 crore scam in irrigation, points virtually to NCP and Ajit Pawar, one week later, Ajit Pawar joins you, what's the message? I was in Nashik, where a gathering which included RSS people were there, and they all said, sir, khoke ki rajditi hai. They openly said it. They openly, the word khoka has become a sort of common parlance on the street of Maharashtra. How does that lift the Prime Minister's image? If one moment you say there's corruption, next moment you tie up with the same corrupt person. How does it lift your image? Let me tell you this, people understand there are some political compulsions. At the end of the day, you want Lord Krishna to win. You want so Ram, 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 Ram to win. There are some, some adjustments they will have to make in the interest of larger sure, but have national you gone too good. Far? The point is, no, I'm telling you, you this, is, this is the Hindu psyche. This no, is but, the you know, but this is an important we point that Jimmy Narasimha Rao makes. Sir. Because when I was interviewing Dr. Jay Shankar, and I've seen now several people say this. They talk about Bhagwan Ram, they talk about Hanuman, they talk about the Ramayana and the Mahabharat, and they talk about tactical compromises on the battlefield, which, was, which yeah, leads to the war being won. So this is something that we're seeing now quite a lot of, which is what he's talking no, about. No, 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 but then but Raul, Raul, in the you regard, of so, sorry, dharma. sorry for speaking out because it's my home state, I feel strongly. The fact is, where does it fit in with the kind of Ram Rajya that you talk about? Jive. You know, what does it leave no, you with? You see, is this Ram Rajya you see, that you tie up for Kokiti Rajya? There, there, there is no politician in this country who represents the true political virtues than Prime Minister Modi. No Prime Minister, no Minister, no Chief Minister in this country can match 
any even an iota of what so you are the prime not, minister not, not, so what people matter what matters to them is prime minister's qualities i have total he is so a you man can do all the total deals integrity of, no so you're saying you can do all the wheeling and dealing no, on the no, ground but no. the prime minister's uh, image is not touched no by no they know he is not making compromises party no, but rahul varma this is no. local yes, yes rashid yeah I mean, by going by Mr. G. V. Narasimha's logic, uh, you know, B. J. P. should be winning all 543 seats. If Mr. Modi is on a big ticket, he is there on Tamil Nadu also, he is there on uh, Telangana also, he is there in all other states. I think you know we must accept what Mr. Yashwant Deshmukh survey is projecting. All we have gone through over 300 seats, and there is a, a kind of trend. This this is a very interesting thing about what 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 is the findings of Maharashtra. There are four states that were always they are kind of you know outliers, and they are giving something in favour of BJP in case of. Uh, Karnataka, in case of uh, Maharashtra, there is a trend, and uh, we will see. No, Maharashtra is not Bihar. with the BJP. It's the other way around. Precisely. So I'm saying there are four states that are very that are very crucial in 2024. Even if the uh, you know uh, the outcome is uh, you know kind of well known that the BJP has an advantage and Mr. Modi is a favourite. One state is Bengal, other state is Bihar, third state is Karnataka, and fourth state is Maharashtra. Now it is giving different kind of trends. I think we must accept uh, what Mr. Yashwant Deshmukh is predicting. We cannot be finding faults with this methodology or, you know, uh, how it will shape okay. in Maharashtra. Can we can't I, be having yeah, different yeah, Yes, Rahul, very quickly. So, two, two points. Yes, in politics, all politicians and parties make these tactical calls. But these tactical calls are going to have cost in the long run. Indira Gandhi in 70s did a similar thing. At, at some point, it costed her party. Maybe, perhaps, when Prime Minister Modi is around, it won't cost. When he's not around, it may cost the party. So all parties face that cost. Second, Throughout the survey, and Yashwan uh, ji uh, has to correct me on this, I have not seen a single state, uh, except the smaller ones perhaps, where BJP is gaining votes from 2019 numbers. They are gaining seats. Even in UP, the votes are not uh, basically... They have uh, got a taking... slight up, uh, slight bump, 53%. Yeah, 50, so, 51, 2%. 52%. So, in that sense, like, in North, uh, like, there are no big gains coming. Uh, in terms of vote share, and even in South and West. So I think where uh, perhaps uh, Mr. Narsimha Rao can explain us that why, despite everything in these five years, BJP is not being I'm able to... You know, and, and, and the point, the interesting point about Maharashtra... No, Rao, but I'm a, little, the... I'm a little shocked by his argument. Listen, you remember also that you are dealing with 10 years of being in government. Sure. Look at Biden after four years. Look at Macron. Look at Trudeau. Here's a man no. who's been in power for I mean, 10 years. I mean, he can retain like, his historic numbers. I mean, I mean, That's I mean, why I mean, itself I mean, is a superlative you know, performance. I think, uh, I, I think Rahul, uh, the point that you made uh, uh, about the two point or less, like somewhere they were leading by 60 points, now they are 50, uh, two point, I understand your point. But I mean, I, what, I, what I learned from uh, the, uh, the experiment and result of Madhya Pradesh is that eventually it will be relative to Turnout, yes. which will be playing 3-4% of jump just out of nowhere for the BJP, just by virtue of their supporters being more excited about going to the polls, mm. and Congress not being in I, a position as organizationally and resource-wise to pull their supporters. I, what mm. happened in the you know, I, I just want to make a small point, which I think is important. Between 2014 and 2019, Rahul, Mr. Modi's popularity was so high that he was even able to pull his party in state elections where they were otherwise not the number one party. BJP was not the number one party of Maharashtra. Maharashtra. It's after 2014, Mr. Modi pulls it up. 10, 12 percent, they even do very well in state assemblies. After 2019, looks what starts happening. Why, what Start, happened in what December minute? in the assembly sir, elections? Sir, just a minute. December, we, we can come back to December, but 2019 to 2024, one minute. Yeah, right. The BJP in Himachal Pradesh, in Haryana, in yeah. Jharkhand, yeah. even in Bihar, in state after state, Mr. Modi alone cannot pull up the state unit. Mr. Modi is still very popular in Maharashtra, but... Maharashtra's own leaders, BJP own leaders, are not happy with the kind of compromises they made to stay in power. Some stage, it may cost them in a Vidhan Sabha. I agree with you, Lok Sabha, it won't cost them because that becomes Modi versus who. But what happens in your state Let units? GBL Therefore, Rahul the... Verma makes an important point. Will the BJP go the way the Congress did after 10, 20 years because it makes these you, compromises? You, you can wish that. If you no, like. he said, he but asked no, a question. No, but, uh, but you see, politics, what happens today doesn't influence voting patterns 20 years down the line. I think that makes no sense at all to me. Now, coming back to your question, Modi ji, he was able to pull several assembly elections initially, but you are saying subsequently he did not do so. Because, you see, once you have pulled an assembly election, the local performance and local leadership yes, that's has, the to, point. Has, to, has to hold that. 
there. People will hold every government accountable. You accept that? I, why not? Okay. I, I can, so I want, I want to press the pedal and go to Gujarat and Goa, and then we have to go to the east, and then we have the big national picture. So Gujarat comes up on your state next. I want to spend uh, very little time here because it's one-way traffic, as one-way traffic can be. I mean, it's like whoosh. There's no comparison. 62% vote share projected in favor of the Bharatiya Janata Party in Gujarat. I mean, 6 out of 10 people they just want That's more the people. highest so far in the country. 6 out of 10. And we're not even dealing with the smaller states like a Himachal or an Uttarakhand. In a big state like Gujarat, 62%. The Congress had 32% vote share. That's come down even further to 26, down 6 from the last time. Let's now come to seat shares. If you've got 62% vote share in a largely bipolar contest, I mean, you don't need to be Ashwan Deshmukh. Uh, to do the calculation, you can do it yourself. It's 26, but are 26 for the BJP in Gujarat. They want, they want their man back. They want their boy back. They're like, he look at how hard he's working. A Gujarati fixing this country, we want him. If back. I was a Rajya Sabha BJP MP who stole to contest Lok Sabha, I'll say, Mujhe Gujarat ki seat de do. Koi bhi de do. <laughs> Koi bhi seat Gujarat ki de do, Vadodara de do, Gandhi Nagar de do. GVN also is ready to contest from Gandhi Nagar. That's the one state where every politician will feel a relative sense of security. I think there Gujarat is, there is a There is little state. difference from contesting a Rajya Sabha and a Lok Sabha. Is that what you're saying? No. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I'm saying that a Lok Sabha... As, as, as safe as... as yeah, safe it, it, yeah, it appears the, the, the safest state for the BJP Rahul. And I don't think there's much to discuss about that. Prime Minister Modi in Gujarat is, you know, really... His popularity is at an all-time high in a way. It's the true... Like you were discussing parallels with American elections. Like you've got along the coast and in mid-America this very clear divide between Republican Democrat states, this is as Republican in Indian context as Republican. And, and you know, uh, GBL made a point that uh, don't look at what happens 20 years from now. But I just for a moment want to pause because one of the first elections I covered was 1990 Gujarat. And at that time, the BJP had to back the Janata Dal Gujarat of Chiman Bhai Patel to allow, to prop him up to form a government. See where we've come 35 years later. We look at events today. If you make mistakes today, you pay a price for it 20 years from now. That decision of the way the Janata Dal uh, Gujarat was eventually, the Congress propped it up for a while, destroyed the Congress in the long term in Gujarat. The Congress replaced the Chief Minister who had 150 seats in Madhav Singh Solanki. Can you imagine Why one of BJP the many blunders? Shivrat Singh Chauhan. No, no, but 150 <laughs> seats. <laughs> BJP, but BJP replaced Shivrat Singh Chauhan with Modi as the dominant figure. That time, Rahul Ga uh, Ra Rajiv Gandhi could never really sort of lift the party. No, but Rajiv and the Congress didn't think so. See, that's that's the, mistake. the mistake. So I'm saying politicians can make mistakes and therefore they must be conscious of the mistakes okay. they make. Let's come to Goa. Uh, Goa has two seats, north and south. This is where all of us hope to retire, at least uh, Rajiv <laughs> and I hope to retire uh, in Goa for sure. Okay, so here's Goa. Lovely, lo lovely, lovely state. Uh, two seats, one each is the calculation, north and south. One seat split between North and South. North is, a, is, is clearly to the BJP. I'm presuming Yashwan is giving because North. Because there are more Christians South, no, the South, interestingly, if the AAP Congress Alliance works perfectly, and it has to work perfectly, it has half a chance. I still believe that the BJP will be very much in the race, even in the South. Percentage of Christians has gone down. One of the stories of our times, Christian population in Goa at the start of this century used to be 30% plus. It's now just over 20% and declining. So you actually, even in South Goa, will find it not so easy. Only a perfect Congress, half alliance, and no other third party like the Goa Revolutionary Party coming in gives them half a chance. I still believe advantage BJP in Goa in both the seats. That's the nature of Goa as well. So let's look now at the projected seat share of the West and the projected vote share of the West. I'll start with um, the vote share projection. Axis My India predicts for the India Today group that the NDA would end up with 48% vote share if you aggregate the states of Gujarat, Maharashtra and Goa. The India Alliance at 38, a 10% gap here for the NDA. Converted into seats, the NDA is at 51, uh, the India Alliance at 27 and why it seems that this is not as one way as the north is because Maharashtra is sticking out as the one state where the BJP's dominance is not quite what the BJP top leadership would like to believe. But look at the story, Rahul, the northwest monsoon. 154 in the north, 51 in the west. You're almost home and dry. Between the two, you're slightly below where you were in 2019. There you won 230 plus. You're slightly below because of Maharashtra in particular, but you're still... Almost there. 
Hello and welcome. I'm Sahil Joshi. Now I'm at the Mumbai seafront. You can see here the Mahim Fort and also the Bandra Worli ceiling, the most iconic locations in Mumbai. Because the people have reposed confidence in Bharatiya Janata Party right. and NDA. And Eknath Ji Shinde has done what the people wanted. People wanted Shiv Sena and BJP together as we have been to together for 25 years. It is only the MLAs who have defected. It is not the people who have defected. How is Ajit Pawar a like-minded party with the, the, the We see it worked in line with the expectation of the people and that's why we are confident of our victory. If you are so confident about 370 votes and 400 for NDA, why do you want all other alliances with you? Why do you want all small parties with you? We are shifting our focus to Gujarat. Confidence in the people's mandate is very, very uh, certain. The youngsters have uh, come in and they have taken the major positions in Gujarat. I feel things will be very different. In Gujarat, if you ask any Congress leader, but they are all demotivated in Gujarat, purely because they know they are going to lose. Election of 2024 will be an election of Modi versus Mudda. Our phones are buzzing, multiple politicians, uh, their well-fishers, supporters across states calling, wanting to know something on the site. So there's no site show happening. If you want to know what the numbers are, stay tuned to our coverage on India today uh, as we take you through state by state, region by region, and then finally the national big picture. We want to come to the fascinating state of Bihar, where Nitish Kumar's U-turn has made things very topsy-turvy and very exciting, which is also why the Mood of the Nation poll had to do extra polling to be able to capture what's happening in Bihar. On your screen right now are the vote share numbers for Bihar first. 53% is what they had in the last uh, Lok Sabha elections. They're projected to be at 52, but there is... On the surface, it seems not much has changed, but so much has changed internally because the JDU, which was earlier with the India Alliance, has now jumped over, which is what kind of keeps the BJP-led India, India Alliance where it was. Uh, the India Alliance was at 31%. That's expected to go up to 38%. Let's see how this converts into seats. For the first time now, on your screen, the Bihar projections on the 40 seats of Bihar. Yashwan Deshmukh and his team at Seawater are predicting that the NDA could end up at 32. Remember, the, apart from Kishan Ganj, they had 39 out of 40 seats the last time. They expected to come down 7 this time round. Uh, the India Alliance, which had only 1, expected to go up to 8. So just imagine, Rajdeep, if Janta Dal United was actually here, BJP was staring at bigger losses in the orange column and the India Alliance was looking at bigger gains, which is what explains that somersault. You know, the fascinating aspect is that when you went to Uttar Pradesh, the BJP is holding its own. The moment you've gone into neighboring Bihar, even though the BJP has now struck an alliance with Nitish Kumar, gone back to its own party, it's down compared to 2019. In fact, if you look at the BJP overall, Except for Uttar Pradesh, none of the major states are seeing a major jump no, for the Yashan, BJP. In Bihar, so that's, that's, that's what makes Bihar very interesting. No, but does, because this happened so close to your poll, does your polling account for the full impact of Nitish coming back to the BJP? Not, not really. I mean, because we, we had to do a snap poll and see what kind of impact it was. We could sense two major things. Number one, yes, there is almost like 8% arithmetic jump you know, from the India faction to the NDA, just by moving JDU supporters to this side, to that side. Which could How, also uh, mean that Nitish is now worth only 8%. Yeah, exactly. This is, this is, this is one of the points which is like, instead of 16%, which he polled in 2014, his core vote is, looks like more like 8% kind of thing, number one. Number two, the, we have, we still don't know who is contesting how many seats, you know, and uh, please remember, even Paswan's party is split into two. So, we have just taken in whatever the seat allocation was there in 2019 as our base one. And, and we realize that the probability of JDU 
tally going down even within the part of the NDA is quite significant. Which means last time they contested 17, won 16, but they could even very well come down, crashing down to single digit. So what this means is that in the overall, yes, JDU did a wise thing probably to come back and, you know, safeguard their own thing. Uh, but if the NDA needs to pick up its tally, probably they, BJP needs to contest more seats because there is a significant anger against the JDU not just among the RJD supporters, but even in no, the but BJP Tiwari, supporters. You come from Bihar. Does this poll account for the potential winning bandwagon effect? The fact that if voters in Bihar think that this is a Modi election, a BJP election, then they may more likely than just at the time of separation choose to go along with the NDA. That is most, most likely to be the case. Because as Yashwanji is saying, BJP is likely to contest on a higher number of seats, guest, get, give lesser number of seats to JDU, which is facing a decline in its support base. But if you see, the, both the parties were at 37% vote share. 15% is the Modi premium because JDU was with BJP in Vidhan Sabha elections. So the Vidhan Sabha elections, when it factors into account, the Modi impact is 15% straight away. So, but with this swing of 8% from Mahagadbandan to NDA, what would have been the result? It would have been 46, 42 just percent in opposite. favor of... Okay, the, the result of, would have been of, just bang up. So again, BJP being a practical or a pragmatic party clearly saw that there would have been significant losses in Bihar. The guy who won't like this -turn was not is Nitish done. Kumar. If he thinks he's worth Rahul Verma only 8 percent, you know, that just shows how, like the BSP in uh, Uttar Pradesh, like the JDS in Karnataka, the JDU seems to be a very diminished force. Yes, absolutely. Uh, and I, I hope Litish Kumar realizes it. Uh, and Litish Kumar perhaps understands that he's diminishing and he's still trying to make most of But his with this 8%, he's still chief minister. No, no, yes. that, <laughs> The see, most so, valuable 8% so, you can have. So think of it. Since 2013, he knows that he's declining. But what he knows that without him, no government can be formed till at least till 2025. And he's making most of it. He's basically, he goes with, uh, so he's, he's, he's one of those politicians where he's being opportunistic and ideological at the same time. He, he joins RJD, gets his caste census done. Comes to uh, BJP, does certain other things. So he's trying to make most <laughs> of it in a very, very small way. But, but you know, look at, maybe the BJP looked at Yashwan's last mood of the nation poll. Yeah. And mm -hmm. there were three states where the BJP was in clear trouble. There was Bihar. There was Karnataka and there was Maharashtra. Yeah. What did they do in Maharashtra? They broke the two major parties, Shiv Sena earlier, then the NCP. In Karnataka, you went and tied up with JDS, brought back Yedurappa into the fold through his son. And in Bihar, you got Nitish Kumar back into the fold. I saw this photograph in the morning papers today, Prime Minister shaking hands with Nitish Kumar. And I just wonder, you know, what makes politicians tick? Here are two people who've attacked each other personally at various stages, Nitish Kumar refusing more than a decade ago to even share a stage with the Prime Minister. But all is fair in love and politics. And I come back to it, Rahul. Really, the I BJP think... has shown itself to be a party of power while claiming to be an ideological party and the Congress has done just the reverse. No, but I don't agree. No, no, no. Once they're in power, they're ideological. In the uh, their logic is, no, listen, uh, they've scrapped Article 370, they've yes. brought India the Ram Mandir. Sure. What other proof do you need of ideology? No, I'm not saying the ideology UCC, is diluted. Yeah, UCC is come about in Uttarakhand. So I'm once just, get they, their formula is you win and then you get ideological. No, to Rahul, win, you don't no, worry no, about it. All I was saying is that there were stage where the Congress had seen these ones, they were going to get, uh, the BJP had seen, they could be down by double digits. Bihar was one of those states. Yeah. Let's find out a way to tackle Bihar. The point, Rashid Kidwai, this is the difference. You see, I got a call uh, mm. just now from a UPA leader. Please show me which are the states where the BJP is growing. I said it's not about the BJP growing but holding its own. And they've held their own mm. by strategic politics. Does the opposition recognize that, uh, 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 Rashid? Yeah, I think, or will they only blame the enforcement I think director? Nitish Kumar, yes, I think Nitish Kumar's story is not complete without the opposition uh, politics. Nitish Kumar seems to have gone on a rebound. He was he worked very hard for this India Alliance, and when Mamta Banerjee, you know, propped up Malikarjun Karge, and when Rahul Gandhi said that you know he will talk to Mamta before appointing Nitish Kumar as a uh, India Alliance convener. All these things look like... You're saying you know, if he was first, appointed convener, he would have stayed on. Press, 
precisely because Nish Kumar was not doing eight percent. He knew his days are numbered. He wanted to be a prime ministerial face. He will not have said it. And this is he was made convinced yeah. of it after 2023 December results. He is also making calculations. Being convener is only uh, uh, worth if you have a shot at something. So he, he thought he was on the losing. Shama Mohammad joining us of the Congress party. Shama Mohammad, do you believe that the in Bihar the BJP in this last stretch has trumped you by taking someone who was not too long ago seen as the architect of the India line? So perception wise and now in reality as per our numbers, the Congress led India alliance has lost a big opportunity. I don't agree with you on that, Rajdeep. Everybody knows what Nitish Kumar is. Like I said before, if he had to go, he had to go. He keeps jumping from here and there. But you said a very important thing is, what is the ideology of the Bhatia Janta Party? For example, let's look at the Meghalaya election. They were with NPP in Meghalaya before the election. During the election, they went their separate ways. Mr. Amit Shah has put in the manifesto that they, the, the party NPP is corrupt and when they come to power, they will take action. They won two seats in that election. And they said very clearly, Conrad Sangpa and NPP is corrupt. They go and join the party after the election. So yes, they will do anything. Opportunist to... when it comes to elections, they are ideological when it comes to governance. So they bring in, as Rahul rightly said, Article 370, Ram Mandir, maybe I uniform civil again. code after the I next election. Ideological in governance, strategic opportunism, tactic, if you want to call tactic. it that, tactical so, uh, then, politics then, when then, it comes then, to uh, Rajdeep, elections. Rajdeep, let me ask you one more thing. Then why is that you can eat beef in Goa? But you cannot eat beef in Karnataka. Okay, they so that's now. This is let's I just really stick for the moment to the data. So no, no, they have we... no ideology. And one more thing, one more thing, one last point. This is not mood of the nation. I would call it mood of the media also. Today I was in the, I was traveling from Delhi to Imphal, and the person in the plane says, you know, देखो देखो मोदी क्या कह रहे हैं that the we are dividing it into north and south. It's all about what Modi. But I don't understand why the paper and the media does not talk about how a present sitting prime minister insults the first prime minister of India, calls him all the names in the world, and nowhere in the world they do that. No, And let's not forget he was a freedom fighter. So why has nobody written about that? How the okay. present prime minister keeps insulting a freedom fighter, the first prime minister of India. And see, you have to understand people get moved, carried away with what media is doing. Before 2014, we were questioned 100 times. I fail to understand why the present government is not. You could write an article on why beef is allowed in in Goa, but not in okay. Karnataka. West Bengal, another big state where the battleground is uh, going to be tough. Let's take a look at the vote share first. Remember, the BJP did very well in Bengal, the breakthrough election of 2019. Now, in vote share, NDA 40%, holding its own. The Trinamool Congress, 43.5%. Here we've separated the TMC from the rest of the India Alliance because it's likely Congress and left will contest together. That's other 73 So, Trinamool Congress, 435 Others, including Congress and left, 73 NDA 40. How does this translate into seats? BJP 19, they won 18 last time, 19 this time. They will be happy that they are holding their own in Bengal. TMC 22, down one. Congress plus left is one seat. So Bengal, once again, Rahul, becoming TMC versus BJP. Congress left getting squeezed out. And clearly the BJP holding its own. Rahul Verma, is there a way of knowing what this may have looked like if the TMC and the Congress and the uh, left can't be together, but the Congress and the TMC were together. How much of a material difference could it have made to these vote share numbers? I, like, it's hard, right? Because you don't know what kind of transfers will take place and what the seat allocation to different uh, parties... Yashwan, how much of the Muslim vote is the Congress actually splitting? Or is it largely going en masse to the Trinamool? You see, the, the minority vote saturation towards TMC is already done and dusted. Yeah. So I don't think there is anything from the minority vote perspective left much to whatever the 8 to 10 percent vote that left in the Congress. But you're are picking up right still. Uh, yeah. How much? How much vote are you picking up for the Congress? You see, they, they together they are polling every about 4 to 5 percent each in, in, in that way. But the funny thing is that I kept on thinking why exactly Mamta Banerjee decided to go on her own. And when I took a deep dive and tried to understand the composition of the what is left of uh, uh, left of, and the Congress vote, I realized that big number of them is actually anti-Mamta, not anti-BJP, which is now left with them. 
So there was a clear and present danger if the Congress and the left would have been in Mamta's alliance that this vote, 8 to 10 percent, a huge chunk shifting them to BJP rather than coming Mamta's way. So, so with, with one caveat. You know, the left definitely had to be on the other yeah. side. Mamta was very clear. Yeah. She needed a three-cornered race. The left voter needed to split the anti-Mamta vote. The Congress voter is yes. more interesting, okay. especially in areas like Malda, which the BJP, you know, did very well last time. There, the Muslim consolidation. And she saw it in a by-election, which she lost last year, which troubled her, because suddenly the Muslim vote was drifting towards the Congress. So in four to five seats, I think it could make a difference, yes, but four to five. So these numbers could have changed by four to five, if even now the Congress ties up with, with the left. That's about also, it, not Rasti, that. Look into the statement and look into the body language of Adirda and everybody else within the Congress rank and file. The way their campaign is has been, it looks more of anti-Mamta, less of anti-Modi. So they are holding on to whatever they have, they are understanding there is a huge chunk of their vote, which is primarily anti-Mamta rather than... Pri but anti I, I will make Rashi. again one caveat. Adil Chaudhary is worried about Adil Chaudhary. Adil yeah, Rajan Chaudhary fine. wants to win but, his own seat. Look, look, but it's not about a Bengal strategy. Look, if there was a... Prop and this is where the India Alliance gets it horribly wrong. Do Rashi. you have a strategy for Bengal or do individual leaders dictate, dictate terms to you but as to how you... No, 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 but Rashi, we, must remember, we must remember uh, Mamta Banerjee has not left uh, India Alliance. So this is the kind part of tacit understanding also. The left Congress alliance uh, just to prevent uh, you know the extra BGP getting extra. Oh, come on, there is no tacit alliance when Adi Ranjan Chaudhary comes every week to Kolkata and attacks you in personal terms. No, no, there is no Mamta. tacit no. alliance between Adi and Mamta. No, no. Let's be very I, clear. So is he no, a Trojan no. horse? Rajiv no, no, it's not about Trojan no. horse. No, no, I no, Mamta keep is saying, also doing a lot of poaching. No, no, by the way, sure. I mean, she it's is not the point one, is one, one, one way no, no, India Alliance should have decided this is Mamta's point. Who's going to drive your alliance in Bengal? Is Adi Ranjan Chaudhary going to decide it or am I going to decide it? Congress got zero seats in a Vidhan Sabha election just a couple of years ago. Can Adi Ranjan Chaudhary simply to protect his own seat sort of dictate terms to Mamta? It won't happen. I think the India Alliance has singularly failed to have any chemistry on the ground. Let, which is why let Shama Mohammed responded. See, it's, a, it's a notional loss of I agree with Rajdeep Ji. Congress should have formed an alliance with TMC. There would have been a vote transfer because Congress vote is also anti-PJP vote. It would have transferred to TMC and they could have won five to six seats extra. 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 See, Amitabh, so it's a notional loss and it's an optical loss also because it sends a wrong message to the entire Absolutely. Country. Shama Mohammed, you want to respond? Yeah, see, I agree that we should be with Mamta Banerjee in uh, West Bengal because we are supposed to be gaining there with her. There's a different story in Kerala because here in Kerala, we are the principal opposition. Let's understand that. We have uh, the UDF has 19 out of the 20 Lok Sabha seats and we've got uh, more than uh, 30 what seats in the man? assembly also. So we are the principal opposition. Whereas in West Bengal from 44 to 0, we have come out, you know. So I, being from Kerala, believe that it is more important to be with TMC than to be with the left. Okay. Uh, Sanju Varma now joins us. Sanju, it's been a good showing in the north, not so good showing in the south. Strong showing in the West and in West Bengal, which we're talking about right now, it seems that the BJP is roughly where, is, where it was. My understanding on the basis of multiple conversations are the BJP's own polls are showing them 25 plus. This poll seems to suggest that they're not quite there. Uh, our data seems to suggest that the uh, BJP could end up at 19, which is just one more than what they had last time. You know, uh, Rahul and Rajdeep, uh, first and foremost, uh, I just have this to say. I think uh, survey after survey, uh, and especially mood of the nation, uh, which is so hugely watched, uh, thanks to Rajdeep, who's trending every second day, and Rahul uh, Kaval, uh, who never misses an opportunity to show Rajdeep the mirror. Hmm. <laughs> Be that as it may, oh, 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 I just have oh, this wow, to wow. say. <laughs> we are not the India Alliance where you are going to create divisions. On a lighter note, yeah, no, no, Sanjuji, no divisions. On a lighter note, this is a good strategy. Every divide day. and rule. You are trending every day. Thoda shant ho jao. Learn to be gracious when I am giving you a compliment, albeit a left-handed yeah. one. Anyway, okay. now coming to the more serious point. You know, I remember um, I have been on a zillion debates on these surveys that have been uh, carried out in the last 12 or 24 odd months. And everybody after the West Bengal Assembly elections of 2021, don't forget in Lok Sabha 2019, from West Bengal, we got 18 seats, 1-8 with a 41% vote share. 
but come west bengal assembly elections 2021 while we improved our tally from 3 seats to 77 which was a 2400% plus jump our vote share fell from 41% in lok sabha 2019 from west bengal to 38% and what did political pandit say are bhai 3% ka vote share ki giravat ho gayi hai bengal mein the magic that happened in lok sabha 2019 of getting 118 seats that is not going to happen in lok sabha 2024 if assembly elections 2021 are an indication to go by okay my limited point is if we are actually improving on our last tally of 18 seats and increasing that to 119 seats i think uh, the actual result may surprise you on the positive okay. i won't be surprised you know, if we are you know, to you know, mentioned trends 25. i actually just went to uh, social media to check the trends and the first trend the top trend nationally at this moment is mood of the nation so mood of the nation is the top trend so well done everyone uh, you guys are clearly doing a good job and at least the audience is a uh, plugged in and watching which is fantastic so thank you that means a lot okay let's run through all the other states of the east starting with jharkhand where much has been happening chief minister hemant soren arrested a few days ago how is it playing out in the polls as per yashwant's mood of the nation 2024 projection nda 56% up 1 india alliance 30% down 5 others 14 in terms of seats nda 12 india 2 same as 20 Uh, 19 round next let's come now to chatisgarh uh, in chatisgarh india today c vote are projecting that the bjp's vote share will go up from 51 to 54 they won the recent uh, assembly elections and on the back of that their vote share is actually going up the congress's vote share was at 41 in the last elections that could now come down 3% to 38 when converted into seats uh the congress had two seats last time round that could come down to one uh the bjp had nine seats last time round that could go to 10 so chatisgarh the bjp doing well and holding on to its gains from the last election that's right the honeymoon effect clearly there in chatisgarh let's turn to a state which is again fascinating because there will be lok sabha and vidhan sabha in the state of odisha 2024 projection nda 40% uh, percent vote share that's plus 2 india 12% navin patnaik's bjd at 41% down 2% how is this all translating into seats virtually again a repeat of what we are seeing in uh, 20, in 2019 in fact a slight jump for the bjp 10 seats up 2 the india alliance mainly the congress there is getting zero down 1 and the biju jatta the 11 down one so clearly again all these states are almost repeating 2019 in fact state after state round if you look at the map of india in many of the states it's a repeat of 2019 is there a way of looking at these numbers yashwant and giving our viewers some insights into what may happen in an assembly context in orissa because like andhra orissa two polls at the same time orissa there is a very clear split vote there is an upswing for the bjp as far as the lok sabha voting is concerned but as far as the assembly voting is concerned it is clearly the navin patnaik bjd way assam so assam uh, let's look at the seat shares for assam last time the bjp had 9 seats that could go up to 12 remember assam is 14 seats the congress and the aiudf was at 3 that could now come down to 2 that's down 1 so assam bjp consolidating its leads in gains let's now look at the overall east seat share Uh, if you look at the 153 seats, and if I look at the vote shares, 47% of the vote for the NDA, 37% for the India Alliance. When converted into seats in the east of India, 103 seats for the NDA, 38 for the India Alliance, 12 for the others. And I think this is a story. You know, while we focused a lot on the BJP's dominance in North India, its dominance in Western <clears throat> India. It is in the east that the sun is rising. The lotus is beginning to bloom, particularly when you include a Bihar and the northeast. I'm presuming Yashwant's included all the states of the northeast, the Manipur's, uh, the Nagaland. No, so we will spend time on each of the northeastern yeah. states, so just so that people know. Uh, we're we're going to go into a break, show you the national big picture, but we're going to spend time on each of the northeastern states as well.